Hi everyone, thank you for joining us today. Mm -hmm. We'll be starting around 10.05, just to let anyone else coming in to come in. Um, and then we'll get started. Um, a quick prerequisite for this workshop while we're waiting. Um, everyone needs access to a Google account and a Telegram account. So just make sure you guys have that. Uh, if you don't, now's a good time to go and create one. Hi everyone, we'll be starting in about just one minute. Okay, thank you everyone for joining us today. Um, so I'd like to just do a quick check. Um, okay, so um, can you all see my screen? I presume you can, right? If you can, could you type it in the chat? Yeah, okay, great. Um, okay, so let's get started. Um, this workshop will be presented by, oh, sorry. This workshop will be presented by myself, Azim, and uh, Chaitanya who will be joining shortly. Uh, we're both uh, third-year computing students from NUS, right? Um, okay, so some ground rules uh, just to make things easier because um, like there is quite a lot of interaction going on in this workshop. Um, please use the raise hand function if you want to ask questions verbally and um, don't flood the chat with random banter because it'll be hard to pick up questions from people, right? Um, if Okay, this breakout room thing, we're not going to do it today. Uh, just, just ask your questions in the chat and then uh, we will we'll get back to you as quickly as we can, right? Okay, so uh, I think we'll start with 
why Telegram bots are, are fun to play with in the first place, right? Um, depending on whatever you're doing, whether you're doing it for fun or you're doing it for like a project or you want to make something easier in your life, um, it offers a number of key benefits. The first one being that it's a mostly navigationless interface, which means that uh, you have no menu bars to dig around to find information and things like that, right? Um, so uh, this is a very NUS specific example, but um, I I've used this in the past because our audience tends to be NUS students. Uh, mm -hmm. If you guys are trying to find uh, the curriculum information for a specific batch on the SOC website, or you want to find out what to do as an international student entering NUS, uh, without Googling, this information is really, really hard to find. However, if you think about it, um, with a bot, you can just be like, I don't know, SHN procedure or something like that, right? And that will make your life a lot easier. Um, the other thing a bot offers is that if you ever want notifications for something, it offers very quick and easy push alerts because it's just as if you're getting a text message, right? Um, there is no complex integration or device specific compatibility. You don't need to register with an app provider to provide push notifications. Um, it's very easy for you to set this up because it's basically a text message, right? Um, it's also a very familiar UI because we all know how to use messaging apps. And um, a Telegram bot works on an existing app you have. So if you want to create something and give it to other people to use, or you're making an internal tool or something like that, um, the bar for, bar for entry is, is very low. Right? The users don't need to download a new app. It works with what they already have. All right? Okay, so Telegram box. Um, there's a quick primer for anyone who's not familiar with Telegram. Telegram is a chat messaging platform similar to WhatsApp, WeChat, that sort of thing. It's a cloud-based platform, so it's not peer-to-peer. -peer. And our bots are natively supported on the platform. So texting the bot is as if you're texting another person. And it basically looks something like this. Right. Uh, okay, this was an animation mistake. Okay, so uh, what is a bot, right? So a bot is a program that typically responds to your input, all right? So you can think of it as a re request response um, sort of thing. And so the question becomes, what can you do with a bot, right? So there are a number of common interactions and a few paradigms that people use for bots. And we'll be going through these paradigms throughout the course of this workshop. So one of the, the simplest things that I'm sure everyone has seen, uh, especially if you are, you've been in Singapore for a while, um, you can perform input manipulation, right? So something very common is get me the bus timing. So there, there are a number of these bus timing bots out there, right? Or you can ask the bot to, for example, add two numbers up. And another very simple example could be to solve the quadratic equation, right? So um, it's, five minutes to the workshop, let's do something, right? So let's build the bot to solve the quadratic equation. And so the prereq at this point is that you have a Telegram account and a Gmail account. Uh, if you don't, please use the Zoom raise hands, raise hand function. Okay, I think everyone's good, great. Okay, so how are we gonna build a bot, right? So we're gonna use this thing called Google Collaboratory, right? So it's a Python development environment on Google servers. Uh, there's no autocomplete, but it works. And that's great. So um, you guys can go to this website, collab.research with collab.researchofworld.com and check it out. I'm going to drop the link in the Zoom chat in a moment. Right? So once you go there, uh, create a notebook and name it whatever you want. But this bot is going to be a request response example. So maybe you want to name it something along those lines. So I'll drop the link in the Zoom chat for everyone. Okay, so um, I'm going to change my screen share to, to go to collab and then uh, we can take a look, right? Okay, sorry. So most likely when you guys enter Colab, you see something like this. And um, if you want, you can click uh, cancel and just take a look here. Um, but the idea is to create a new notebook. So what you can do is you can click file and then uh, new notebook, right? Um, 
Alternatively, I'm going to drop the link to this specific notebook and you guys can just duplicate it to make your life easier. So if you want to do that, you can um, click on the link I sent in the Zoom chat and then click file and then uh, there is a save or copy in draft, right? So you can do that as well. So I'm actually going to do just that. Uh, I'm going to create a copy of this notebook. And we have that here. Okay, so um, has everyone either created a new notebook or made a copy of mine yet? Uh, if you haven't, could you just put the red check mark or something so that I know that uh, I need to slow down? Uh, okay, I don't see anyone. Okay, Ken. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a Telegram bot, right? So uh, let me show you guys how to create one and then you guys can do the same thing, all right? Uh, just a moment, I'm going to change my screen share to my Telegram. Okay, so you need to look for um, uh, this account called the bot father, right? Um, so I've sent the link to the bot father in the Zoom chat as well. And then you guys can just click on that and you should open this bot father account here. All right. So when you're here, you just click, uh, go to bot father and click new bot, or you type the, the command slash new bot. And once you do that, it will basically create a new bot for you. So you need to give it a name. So your bot can be named anything. I'm going to name it Azim Actor School Bot, right? Uh, this is the public name of the bot, right? You also need to give it a handle. So the handle can be anything as long as it ends in the word bot like this, right? So I'm just going to call it Azim underscore HS underscore bot. And then that will create a bot for you and you will get this thing called the token, which is this thing in red, all right? So um, I'll give you guys about two or three minutes to do the same thing. And then remember, you need to store your token and uh, save it, basically, right? Um, at this point, is anyone facing any trouble or anyone is unsure or you need me to go back and redo any part of this? So I'll um, continue at about 10, 15, 10, 16, for, so that everyone has a chance to do this.
Okay, so I think we can continue. Okay, so everyone should be um, here already. Um, if you're at if you're looking uh, at a blank notebook, I'm going to give you guys a link. Um, just a moment. Okay, so if you're looking at a blank notebook, uh, you can click on the link I just sent and you can copy the contents into a code block here. So what is a code block? So here in uh, Colab, you can create two types of, type, uh, of blocks, right? The first kind of block is called a code block, right? So here you can type code here, right? here. The other thing you can create is a text block where you just type like normal stuff um, and it will show up as text. All right. So if you are starting with a blank notebook, you can click on the link I sent just now and just um, copy everything into a code block. Yeah. Okay. So once you're here, let me run through what this page is doing and then we can get this up and running. All right. Um, okay. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to install some required packages, right? So um, why we are doing this, oh, okay, this is a code that should be okay. So why we are doing this is because um, the Python Telegram bot is a library, which is a third party piece of code that we are going to make use of to connect to a Telegram, right? There's no point in us in writing this ourselves. Someone else has already done it. So we're going to install this library so we can make use of it. Alongside that, we're going to install another library called request, but that's for data. Okay. Then um, if you've made a copy of the notebook I sent you, then uh, you will see uh, three code blocks here. The first block here is just setting up some variables and importing some things for us to be using. Right. Um, the second code block here is a bunch of commands that uh, we have created. So these commands are stuff that when, when you get a text message from the bot, you can execute these functions and then they will do something. So let me give you an example. Here in the main part of the code, you can see it says dispatcher at handler. And so here we are adding a handler, which is a command handler for the word start. So if someone sends slash start, what happens is the start command is called and then it goes here to the start function, right? At the start function, what it does is it looks for the current user and then it replies to the user with the first name and their last name, all right? So what we can do now is over here, paste in the token that uh, you got from Telegram. So uh, that will be this red color thing that you probably got, right? So just paste it in here, okay? Now the next thing you need to do is install the packages. So um, you can click on this play symbol here, right? And this should install the packages you need. All right. Um, as of recent, there were some issues with Google installing this package. So we'll see if there's any problems today. Ah, okay. So if you do get an error like this, like the red color one here, right? It says that you need to restart your runtime to use the newly installed versions. So just click on this restart runtime button and then uh, it should fix the issues for you. Right, so uh, when the runtime is restarting, you can see on the top right corner here, and once you have a green tick, that means it's up, right? Then you can click here, right? This code block, click um, runtime, and then run after. So this will run everything all the way down here, right? Once you've done that, you can actually go back to your bot that you just created, right? And maybe you can send it slash start, and then it'll say hi to you. Just like we defined here in the um, high function, all right? So can everyone give this a shot? And let's see if anyone faces any issues and then uh, we can move on. Uh, I'll wait until about 10.22 for everyone to try this out.
Okay, um, so just a quick check-in. Is anyone having any trouble at this point? If you are, please raise your hand or type in the chat or something of that sort, and we'll be happy to help you out. Uh, for anyone who came in a bit later, this is the collab template. You can just copy this and make a copy of this. Okay, uh, someone has asked uh, what to do after you restart the runtime. So I'll just go through this part. So once you've restarted the runtime and uh, you have keyed in your, your token here, you just click on this block, right? And then click edit and then, uh, sorry, runtime and then run after. Uh, the purpose of this is we don't want to rerun this code on top, but everything else here is the boilerplate code to get our Telegram bot running. Okay, so is everyone okay? Uh, For the second code block, this one, is it? Uh, so you don't click play here. Rather, what you do is um, you click uh, click into the code block and then you click runtime and then run after. So what it does is that it will just execute this code and then it'll go to the next chunk. The, the program stops at this point to run the main function. And this is the one that you will see this spinning thing here. Um, if you copied the code from my bot, um, then the, from the GitHub link, then yes, this is normal. Then you will see this running on the second one because you didn't split it up into multiple blocks, which is fine. It's not, I mean, it's not a big issue. Yeah. Okay, so if you want to test it on Telegram, let me show you again. Um, once you add bot father, you, you will see that it says you can find your bot here, right, at this link. So just click on the link and it will come to your bot, right? Then you can send it whatever you want, right? Like slash start or slash help, which is another predefined help command. Does that help? Okay, cool. So um, what we're going to do next is we're going to make our own function called, uh, we're going to link up this function called the echo function to the echo command, right? Oh, sorry, actually we've already done that. Hmm. Okay, so uh, let me explain what's going on here. So we have this line here, which says that we're adding a message handler for any text, right? So if it's not a start command or a help command, it will echo your text for you, right? So you guys can try this now. You can go to your bot and you can say something like, uh, I don't know, I love cookies, right? And then it will echo your own text back to you, right? So the reason this happens is because we've got this echo function defined where what it does is it just takes your message text and then it just replies to you with that, right? So you guys can try this out as well and make sure it's working for you. If it's working for you, then we can move on. Okay, cool. So I think it's working for more or less everyone. Um, okay, so I guess we can continue. Um, okay, so let me just change my screen share to this. Uh, okay, yes. So uh, I'm just going to leave this here so you guys can see. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to try and create a simple Telegram bot um, that uh, solves the quadratic equation. So uh, the expected input is you give it three numbers representing A, B, and C from the quadratic equation of AX squared plus BX plus C. So maybe you send it something like slash quadratic one, two, one, and then it outputs your roots, right? Um, so we'll, I'll, I'll get started and then um, you guys can continue from there, okay? So how, does, how should we do this, right? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new code block, right, over here. And then we define a function called quadratic, right? 
So quadratic, just like these other functions, takes in both an update object and a um, context object, right? So I'm just going to copy this part here. Uh, okay, yeah. So just to, to help you understand, um, the update object allows, uh, allows you to get the update. So the Telegram thinks of any interaction with the bot as an update, and this gives you the update. Uh, the callback context is just the context which we don't really need. Yeah. Right. Okay. So what we're going to do is first we're going to take the words that come from the message, right? So um, the message is available to us at update.message. Uh, dot text, right? So um, incoming message is this, all right? Um, so the next thing we do is we kind of split it up into its component parts. So incoming message part equals to uh, incoming message dot split by space. So what this will give us is this will give us an array containing um, um, the, the, the different parts of the message. So if let's say you had sent in something like, uh, so your message might have been something like slash quadratic one, two, one, right? What this does is uh, create an array that looks like this, right? Quadratic one, two, one. All right, so um, basically the incoming message part now looks like this. Okay, um, the next thing we need to do is this is an array of strings. So we, we need to convert them into numbers and we also need to get rid of this thing because we don't need it, right? So let's call um, the numbers the terms of the equation, right? So we can say terms equals to uh, map lambda x uh, x, right? So we are going to run a map function on this whole thing. And then we're going to just take each of them and convert them to an integer. The next thing we do is we pass in the array itself. So that will be incoming. Uh, message part, there should be parts, I think, yeah. Um, and then we only take the stuff starting from the first index. So we only take this part of the array, right? And then we turn this into an array ourselves so that we can use it. And so we add the list thing in front, okay? So with this done, you basically have an array. So terms should now look like this, right? Terms should look something like this now. So now that you have this, you guys can try to manipulate terms and then output the um, uh, the roots of the bot. So uh, you get, you probably want something like uh, response equals to your roots are. Okay, so maybe you have root one and uh, root two, right? And then you guys can go and try to, to calculate root one and root two, and then um, take a look at the other commands here and try and figure out how you will reply with the response, right? And then remember that this is a quadratic function. So um, we are going to call it with the slash quadratic command. So you need to register a handler here as well, all right? So I'll give it till about 1040 for everyone to give it a shot. And if you have questions, uh, you guys can ask and we'll help you guys out. Thank you. 
in the meantime, is anyone having any trouble? Okay, so I've got a couple of questions and um, I will just answer them uh, while you know they are waiting. And so we'll resume at 1040, but in the meantime, someone has asked, uh, what does this mean? Right? What does arrow arrow none mean? So um, Python is a language called a loosely typed language, which means that in other languages, you might say like, oh, this is an integer, or this is a string. Python doesn't really care too much about this for you as the programmer. But if you want to make it more clear for you what your functions do, you can add this. It's called a type hint, and it tells you what the return type of function is. Right? So um, I, it's not necessary to have it there, but it does help to make things a bit more clear. Um, you, I mean, it does make sense to put it there just for, for your own uh, clarity, but uh, it's not a must.
Okay, so another two minutes and we'll continue. Um, has anyone not been able to get this up and running yet or is having trouble with this? Okay, so if you see issues like um, root one or root two is undefined, that means you haven't defined it. Uh, and it's your task to figure out what the, the variable root one is, right? So you might need to do something like root one equals to, I don't know, your code here, right? And then once you do that, then um, you will get the values associated with root one and root two. Like, the, the whole purpose of this exercise is for you to, to write some code that gets you root one and root two. Aha, uh -huh, okay. So um, if you haven't defined the handler here, you might get this problem. So uh, if you're calling slash quadratic and it's not working, uh, check that you have defined the quadratic handler here. Okay, so let me write uh, my answer here and then um, you know, we'll see where we go from here and see if you guys get something similar, right? So um, I've written it somewhere else. So I'll just copy and paste it in. Uh, okay, so um, to solve for, for the quadratic equations, we need the terms A, B, and C. So this gives us our three terms. Then we calculate the discriminant. So that is uh, b squared minus 4ac, right? Um, then you solve for solution 1 and solution 2. So that's minus b plus the discriminant over 2a. And solution 2 is minus b minus the discriminant over 2a. That gives you your two roots. And then you can you know, um, print them out. Then the other thing we need to do is add the handler here. So um, the quadratic command. And that calls the quadratic function. All right, so now I'm going to run this and let's see how this goes for me, All right? Uh, let me share my screen. Uh, yeah. Okay, um, by the way, I've created a breakout room. Uh, I guess it does help. So there's a breakout room available that you can just join if you need help, All right? Okay, so let's try this out. So for, let's see if it's up and running first. No, it's not. Hmm. Okay, just a moment. I guess I'm having some difficulty as well, which is normal. Um, things sometimes don't work the way you want them to work. Ah, okay. So uh, cookies, does it work? Does it echo? Yes, okay. So uh, quadratic one, two, one. Okay, great. So I am able to get my roots, right? Um, is anyone having difficulty with this so far?
Uh, okay, I take that as a no, and then we can move on. Okay, so now we are able to, to send simple responses such as uh, solve like a quadratic equation. Let's do something else. Something very common is also image manipulation, right? So we're going to, uh, to, to uh, get an image from a URL, right? And then uh, we're going to respond with that image. So this part, you guys can just follow along and I do it and then you guys can try it after it yourself, okay? So we're going to create a function called define, uh, so we call it uh, get cat, right? Um, so same thing, the signature looks similar, right? Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to give it a URL like this, right? So um, the actual API I wanted to use today just went down. So uh, I guess we'll make do with something else instead. And uh, we just need to do this. Right, same thing. But instead of reply text, we're going to use the reply photo function, right? So this takes in one parameter called URL, which is uh, the one that we just created here, right? Then what we'll do is we'll add another handler for the cat function and it'll call get cat, okay? So um, just watch what I'm doing first and then you guys can try it, right? Uh, let me stop and restart this. Okay, so now that it's running, we can try slash cat. And if all goes well, we should see a cat photo. Aha, uh -huh, all didn't go well. Um, hmm, what is the issue? Okay, time for me to debug. Uh, uh, ah, okay, I don't know. Oh, okay, okay. Um, there was a parameter conflict. Okay, so um, you can just do URL, right? Uh, and uh, it will reply to you with the cat photo. So you guys can give it a shot as well. So just um, this cat does not exist.com and then uh, update the message to reply photo URL and you should be able to get cat pictures. Um, yeah, okay. So one thing you guys will notice is that um, no matter how many times you do this, you will always keep getting the same photo. So why does this matter? This matters because Telegram caches images. So if it says the image looks the same as what it has sent before, it doesn't re-download it, but rather it sends you the same photo over and over again, thinking that the URL has not changed. So we need to force the cache to update, and I'll go through the process of how we can do that in a minute. So you guys make sure you can send, or you can receive cat photos first, and then uh, we move on from there. Okay, so I'll give you guys still about 10.49. Um, and if you have any difficulty, please, please, please sound off in the chat and we'll do our best to help you out. Ah, sorry, it's here. Oh, you mean at the bottom, is it? This this handler? Okay, they're both available here, so you can just take it.
Can we give another one minute and then continue? Okay, so I think I'll continue. Um, okay, so uh, let's see. We noticed that it keeps sending us the same photo. So this is just a little bit about like how HTTP works. So um, if you give it a unique URL every single time, it will stop caching it, right? So what we can do is we can create a number, right? So the number is a random integer. Right. So the random function just outputs like something a number between zero and one, like 0 0.32 or something. So we just multiply it by a thousand and that gives us, okay, should we make it like a bigger number, right? So this gives us <coughs> sorry, this gives us a random big number, like three five five seven two or something, right? And then uh, we can just um, append it to the end of the URL. So ID equals number. Um, the website doesn't care about this number. Right, so it just spit up and ignores it. But what this does is it makes the URL unique to a telegram, right? So uh, now that I've made this one change, what will happen is, uh, let's come here, run time, run, run oh. oh, okay, I wasn't supposed to do that. Uh, whatever. Okay, so this is running. And now if we come here and slash cat, uh, we get a different cat picture every time, right? Because the, the, the values are not being cached. Uh, obviously, there could be a, a conflict. So for example, if my number was like, I don't know, one, two, three, and then you generated one, two, three, then whoever did it first, that picture will show up. But to you generally, this will always look like a new photo. Yeah, All right? Okay, so um, we are basically done with uh, this part of the workshop where we talk about request response box. Does anyone have any questions at this juncture? If you don't, then uh, we can move on to the next one. Okay, so I haven't seen any things. Oh, the get cat function. Okay, sure. This one. Also not to worry, um, the slides and everything will be made available to you at the end of this workshop as well. Um, and all the code is on the GitHub repo as well. So you can take a look at it. Um, if you guys are comparing the GitHub repo, uh, you will see that this is a different URL. Um, the thing is today morning, the initial API for cats I was using went down. Um, and so we had to replace it with another one, yeah. Okay, so let's move on to the next uh, part of this, right? Uh, okay, so congratulations, you can manipulate input, right? So that's the, the first thing you can do. Um, the next thing we can talk about is uh, 
retrieving information from somewhere else, right? So that's another very common thing. So we talked about uh, things like getting information from our database or an API, like the bus bots, right? So what we're going to do is, oh, okay, sorry, we've done this. Um, okay, another one is how to alert users when something has happened, right? So if you want to uh, get notifications that an event has taken place, right? So maybe you want to monitor a server or you want to monitor the rain or something of that sort, right? Um, or your results were released, something like that. We can make a bot that alerts the user when a specific condition is met. And in the example for today, we are going to uh, basically monitor a fake web page I've set up for today's workshop. Um, and when the information on that web page changes, the bot will alert you, right? So I'm going to take a quick sidetrack to answer the question of how do we interact with a web page programmatically? The reason this is important is because um, if you're going to get information from a web page, you need to do it via code, right? So um, a quick sidetrack. So the internet communicates with you, your computer, via this thing called HTTP, right? Hypertext Transfer Protocol. And in HTTP, there are these things called HTTP verbs, right? So um, the four main verbs are the get, post, put, and delete, right? So what they are quite self-explanatory in the sense that if you HTTP get a web page, for example, you get uh, www.google.com, it will retrieve the web page for you. On the other hand, if you're sending information to a web page, then you post information to the web page. Uh, HTTP lets you differentiate between different kinds of sending information. So you could be sending something to create something. For example, you are adding a record um, in your Excel spreadsheet or something, right? Or if you're updating a record or if you're deleting a record, right? So um, an example of post would be like, if you go to Shopee and you create an order, but an example of put would be maybe you update the quantity of something in your cart, right? So the put is an update, but the creating order is a post and the delete is uh, delete, la, right? So uh, we're going to build a bot that alerts the user um, something happened, right? Wait, why did it go back? Okay, yeah. So um, we're going to use this thing called the Python request library, right? Um, so someone pointed out that I didn't actually install the request library just now. And that's because we need it for the second part, not the first part, right? So let's do that. We're going to create another bot on Colab. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to send you another link and you guys can just duplicate that notebook instead so we can make our life like easier now. Right. Uh, so just give me a moment. Okay. So um, I've sent this link in the chat here. Uh, just click on this and then click on file and then uh, save a copy in Drive. Okay, so um, if everyone has done that, uh, we're now going to do something called um, getting, okay, so what we're gonna do is we want to send an alert to you, your, your current account, um, but we're not doing it in response to a message, right? We're going to proactively send this uh, alert, right? So uh, how do we do that? So the first thing we need to do is on Telegram over here, you need to go to this thing called the user info bot, right? I'm going to drop a link to this um, in the chat as well to make it easier for you. Yeah. Okay. So there's this thing called the user info bot. And this thing is very helpful because what it does is it tells you what your user ID is. So you can see, I just sent stress start to it and it'll tell me what my user ID is. This number is really important because um, it allows you to uniquely identify your current self via Telegram, right? So once you've done that, um, just make a copy of it. And then um, as usual, like we previously did, make sure you paste your token in here, right? So I'm going to copy my previous token, uh, which is here. 
And just to make sure I don't edit the wrong thing, I'll make a copy of this. Okay, cool. So, uh, paste my in. Okay, so I'm going to show you guys how to write this manual poll function, right? And then after that, you guys can try, right? So, um, I have set up a fake website we can use located at this URL, which I'm going to send in the chat, right? So all it does is it has the color of the day on it, right? So I can control this web page and I can change it to things like red, for example. And then if I refresh it, it will tell me that the color of the day is red, right? So what we're gonna do here is, uh, okay, so let me just, Save this here. Okay, so this is for my reference data. So what we're going to do here is we're going to write a very simple function that goes to this website, finds the color of the day, and if the color is blue, it will alert me. Okay, so the first thing we do is um, we have the request module which we will install later, right? So we do um, uh, response equals to request dot get this URL, right? If uh, blue in response is uh, updater dot dot send message. The chat ID will be the number of your chat ID. And uh, the text, we can say that Oops. Color is blue, right? So uh, we want this to keep running. So what we'll do here is we'll add a while true loop. Um, and then once that's there, uh, we can make the bot sleep for one second so that uh, it doesn't keep checking and keep swimming, right? Uh, so let me just install the packages and I'll show you what this can do. Okay, so um, as usual, you'll probably face that uh, runtime error that we saw earlier. Um, and it should be quite quick fix. Just click restart runtime. Uh, and things will be fine. Okay, cool. So um, if all goes well, the bot will... I will change the website to say blue and hopefully the bot will send me messages. I hope. Hmm. Did I make a mistake somewhere? Interesting. It's not supposed to do that. Okay, let's take a minute to debug why this is happening. Oh, okay. It's um, in response to content, sorry. Okay, great. So um, let me just show you. So the website has been, oops. Uh, the site has been updated to say that the color of the day is blue, right? And then uh, my bot has just been sending me, it's blue, it's blue, it's blue every second, right? So now you guys can try this, right? Um, a copy of the code is here. Take a look and try to write it yourself as well. Um, and see if you are able to get this up and running too, right? Um, in the meantime, I will change the website to a different color so it doesn't spam everyone. And then at 11.05, uh, I'll change it back to blue and we make sure it works for everyone. 
Does anybody have any questions so far? Okay, so is anyone having difficulty or trouble so far? Okay, so I will change the color to blue now. And let's see if everyone, uh, well, if all goes well, a bunch of people are going to get spammed with it's blue or something of that sort. Yeah, I'm being spammed. I'm going to turn off my board. Uh, but yes, um, hopefully everybody is getting a bunch of messages telling them that the color is blue on their website. Is anyone not getting this? Is anyone facing difficulty with this? So you should be, I mean, yeah, it's a little spammy, me, but it, that's what it's like. Hmm. Uh, Yusuf, I, it's entirely possible that uh, a bunch of people spam my website and uh, it has gone down. Uh, let me give it a shot and see why it went down. No, only the website is still up. Hmm. Uh, can you jump into a breakout room if you guys need help and then Chai will be able to help you guys out? Um, also, you might be missing the protocol or something, so you can give that a shot. Okay, so is okay. We've got um, two or three folks in the breakout rooms, and once they're back, then we'll continue. So we should be able to start by around eleven ten. If you guys want, you can take a quick uh, break until then. Uh, go get some water or something of that sort, and then we can continue after. Sure, sure, no worries. Um...
So for those of you who are wondering where this function is being called, the manual poll function gets called immediately after the, um, the handlers are, are registered. So what this does is that once the, the bot starts, uh, the manual poll function is called and this will just keep running, right? So the bot now at this point doesn't care about input the bot and rather it just focuses on checking this website every one second and then coming back and telling you whether the, the, the thing is blue or not. Okay, so is everyone okay? Okay, we're waiting for Chai and Darren to come back. And then the next part of the workshop will be done by Chai. Um, the recording will be uploaded on our YouTube channel um, and you guys can access it from there as well. Yeah. Yeah, so the slides, the recording and all the materials used in today's workshop will be sent via email and then uh, you'll be able to access um, all the content yourself at your own time if you want to review it and try something on your own as well. Okay, so um, I'll just give you a primer on what's going on next before while waiting for Chai to come back, right? Okay, so um, another paradigm that's very common for bots is um, the ability to have group-based interactions, right? So um, if you guys have played the werewolf game or the Quasarium game on Telegram, um, that's a very common use case for a bot uh, on Telegram, right? And so you can do a lot of interesting things with that. And we're gonna do something that we use in the School of Computing. Uh, we're gonna create a very, very simple attendance bot. So the purpose of this is to just understand how you can have multiple people working on the same bot to perform different functions. Um, yeah. So once Chai is back, we will continue with that. Yeah, 
we apologize for the delay on this. Uh, we'll be starting about 10, 11, 15. Hi. Okay. Cool. Sorry. Chai is, Chai is back and let's continue. From... Yeah. Hello. Uh, yeah. Sorry. I was helping people in a breakout room. Uh, let me share my screen. Azim, can you give me? Yeah. Uh, all right. So I'm not sure how much Azim talked about it, but roughly what we'll do. Can everyone see my screen? Yeah, we can. Okay. So uh, the two bots you've learned till now. Uh, they assume that only one user is interacting with them at the same time, uh, but there is another paradigm of bots which, which involve interact, which involve multiple people interacting with each other through a Telegram bot. Uh, so some examples of it would be uh, if you have played Quizarium or uh, Werewolf on on your on Telegram. Or if you're if you're a year one and US student, you might be using an attendance bot in your CS 1101s reflections. Uh, not sure. So that the only difference is that these bots interact with uh, these bots make multiple people interact with each other through them, which makes the code sufficiently complex, more complex than the bots you've seen before. But still, it's not like it we cannot understand it at all. Okay, so I will be going through this bot which I wrote, which which I just propped up. Uh, to to explain how these group paradigms work. Uh, and what I will be doing is I'll be going through this diagram to explain the code, while at the same time, <clears throat> I will be explaining the code on the side. Okay, uh, I'm, I'm doing this because the code is a little more complex than whatever you've written till now, but uh, I'm not sure if Azim has shared the link of the notebook with oh, you. Oh, right, I haven't. Let me do that. Yeah, uh, maybe that's good. Uh, Chai, do you want to zoom in a little bit? Uh, yeah, sure. In the code, right? Yeah. Okay, I've I've sent the link to the collab uh, notebook as well, so you can go and take a look. Yeah. So uh, uh, you don't need to understand everything right now. That's okay. Um, but uh, take a little while and go through the code. I think if you give it five five to ten minutes, give it around 10, 15 minutes, trying to understand the code, uh, then it should make sense. It's not very hard. It's just it's just more lines than you've written till now. Okay, cool. Uh, uh, if we go, okay, so I will be going through the Telegram bot. So what it roughly does is uh, you have a tutor and your students and the tutor can start an attendance session and uh, the relevant students get a message to mark attendance, which, and then they can mark the attendance. Uh, and the Telegram bot just updates everything by itself. So the tutor, it's a mechanism to mark attendance, which is not as brittle as pen and paper, for example. Uh, and if I go through the code, we have a class called attendance session uh, that I'll, I'll talk about why those details are needed. But uh, if I have to, let's say I have to, I, let's say I display the bot first, okay. Um, Telegram. 
Who? Uh, right. Uh, if you can see my telegram, so roughly what? So this is how it works. Let's say I am a tutor. Okay. So or I, yeah. So the first thing I do is I start attendance. Um. Oh shit! My bot isn't running. Let me start running it. Uh, Cool. Uh, so now that I did start attendance, uh, my board is asking me to choose a class. I select a class and uh, currently I've hard coded it to send a message to me and Azim. Ah, I see. Okay. Uh, just give me a minute. So the first thing I do is I do a start. So this is like a student mechanism. Sorry about this. I need to, for some reason, collab is crashing on me. Cool. Okay. So the first command I do is start. And I need that command because in an attendance bot, you send messages to people who are not directly interacting with the bot, which is why you need their user IDs, as we have seen in the previous bot where we had to send the it's blue message to a user ID. And the start message is, a, is just a mechanism to store the user ID of any user. So what I did was when I did start, my user ID has been stored in in the Telegram bot. You should use a data in, in an ideal world. You should use a database like SQL or Redis to do that. Okay. So now that the Telegram bot knows my user ID, now I do start attendance. Okay. And I'm asked which class I want to mark attendance for. So if I select, let's say I select a class, right? Uh, so this is my attendance session. Uh, this is the bot saying, hey, I'm sending attendance messages. And this is, so I've also hard coded myself as a student, which is a little weird, but just for demonstration purposes. So I'm a student and I get the message mark attendance, right? So now I enter the command mark attendance and then my attendance has been marked. So you've seen this for me, but the same message was also sent for Azim, which is why both Azim and my attendances have been marked in the bot. Even though, so this is how it works that since I'm a tutor, I'm sending an attendance message to all my students. In this case, the students uh, were Azim and me, and both of us got a message to mark attendance. And when we did uh, mark attendance, our message was updated so the tutor can just see it here. Uh, make sense? Any questions still there? Uh, if not, then I can start going through the code roughly. Cool. Uh, so, okay, let's go through the code first. So I have an attendance session object, uh, which represents the chat, has a chat ID. Uh, so the attendance session object represents the attendance message I just showed you, which has the list of all the students who have marked attendance. So that message obviously belongs to a chat, right? The chat between me and the bot, which is why we need a chat ID. Uh, at the same time, it also represents one message in that chat. Uh, it cannot be any other message, which is why I also need a message ID. And finally, I need the message to represent the message string. So since I have to update the message with everyone who marks the attendance, it is represented as a string. Uh, cool. Uh, okay, so going down, I have, so this is my database. I've essentially just stored it in dic Python dictionaries right now, but this is not how you should do it. You should always use a a more robust database like a SQL or a Redis database. And as you can see, I've hard coded the class 12 day to be me and Azim. Okay. Uh, cool. So let's let's go to the common commands. First we have start. And as we saw that start is used to store our user user ID in, in that bot, right? This is what we do. So we take the username of the person and map it to the user ID. And we say, hey, your username has been stored in a very secure service. Uh, cool. So Going through the diagram, so when if, if I assume the flow of a tutor, I have start attendance session, right? And what it does is it asks you to select a class, okay? Uh, and th those classes are pulled from the class to students database, which is here, okay? Uh, so once, so start attendance session uh, sends a message telling the tutor, hey, these are the classes you can pick, choose a class. Uh, once the tutor selects a class, we go to the class handler function. And I'll tell you about how that works later. Just for now, assume that 
once I put start attendance session, I do a return to class, and this takes us to the class handler function. Okay. Uh, what class handler function does is it creates an attendance session. For attendance session, we need chat ID. We need the we need the chat ID. We need the message ID, and we need the message text. Okay. I save the session in the dictionary. Okay. And then I send I send the message to students in the class. So I have a class to students, right? Uh, that gives me the class list. Uh, I go. To, I use that class to students database to get the list of students and send everyone a message. Call, uh, send everyone a message. Okay. So once I get the list of students, I go to this function called send attendance message, which is used to send messages, right? And to send messages, obviously we need the user ID, not the username, which is why we use the user name to IDs database. Okay. And what it does is very simple. It trades through the usernames and sends a message to sends a message to everyone to mark their attendance. Okay. Uh, that's it. So at this point, I am a tutor who has selected a class. Uh, and once the class has been selected, the list of students has been known and all of those students have got an attendance message. Any doubts still here? Um, yeah, feel free to like ask on the chat or even unmute yourself and ask. Oh, I'll be waiting for 15, 20 more seconds. Um, okay, um, then I will be moving on. Oh, cool. So at this point, all of the students have received their uh, attendance messages, right? That, hey, you should mark your attendance. So what a student can do is they can use the mark attendance function. Uh, or the mark attendance command. Uh, what it does is uh, it gets the class which the student is a part of, which is why I use the students to class database. And from that class, we get the attendance session. So from students to class to the attendance session. So I can map the student finally to the attendance session they should belong to. And uh, what I do is I edit the message text of that attendance session to add the name of the student who just marked attendance. So if you go back originally, uh, so yeah, uh, if, if I have to, let's see. So initially the message looked like this, uh, attendance session for, uh, okay. Uh, this was all the message looked like. But as soon as a student marks attendance, I need to update this string with the name of the student, which is why I have this edit message text. Uh, so here is like first name, last name. That's what I add. So let's say if I mark attendance, it will become. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. So that is mark attendance. Uh, what it does is it just like up updates the attendance message. This is just a helper function to get the first name and the last name. Uh, that's about it. That's mainly in the. That's mainly all things in the board. But one thing I also wanted to share was. Uh, there is in the bot there is a conversation flow so if if we take if if i to recap what we do is if a tutor enters start attendance then the bot itself gives me a list of the command of the classes they can go right uh of the classes we can mark attendance for um, and that's handled through a conversation handler it's very similar to a command handler it's just that uh it represents a conversation. So you have an entry point in a conversation and you have those states and you have callbacks. So entry points is the point from where you start the conversation. So as soon as I enter start attendance, uh, I start a conversation uh, and then I can go to any of these states. In this case, there is only one state called class, which is the class handler function. Uh, and as we can see that we do, after start attendance session, we do return to class, which takes us to the class handler function. That's how the conversation is handled. You can take uh, the official Python Telegram bot repository has has examples uh, has examples on how to do how to handle conversations uh, conversation bot. So it, it has something similar conversation handler. So you can take a look at it. If it doesn't make complete sense right now. Uh, Cool. So that covers like attendance bot and how group paradigms work. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know. Um, 
yeah but uh, i know the code is a little long than the previous bots you've done but just take like five ten minutes to take a look at it i think it uh, if you are in full possession of your mental faculties and take a look at it for 10 minutes 10 to 15 minutes it should make some sense okay. um, yeah any questions Thank you very much. Type uh, on the chat? yeah uh, I think we can take over. Sure. Okay. So let's um, let's do some extra stuff, just uh, some information that might be helpful to you, and then we can end today's session. Okay. So um, let me show you guys something. Uh, okay. So do you remember this line here that we we saw just now, right? Uh, so this is in the request response bot. Uh, um, there's this line called updater dot start polling. Right, so I'm just gonna give you guys some information on how Telegram handles receiving messages from users. Right, so um, I've got this nice animation here. So let, let's talk about that. So what does updated or start polling mean? Right. So what's happening is that when you send a message to Telegram, so you the user send a message to Telegram. Telegram has an API called the Get Updates API, right? So the message gets sent to that API. In a polling scenario, your program, so in this case, you're the, the Python Telegram bot library, contacts the Get Updates API, gets the latest message that was sent there, interprets the message, processes it, and then sends it back to Telegram, who then sends it to the user, right? So, so far, that's what has been going on. Uh, similarly, if you remember the uh, the server side alerts example with the blue color thing, um, we're doing the same thing, right? Our program contacts the website, looks for the change. If there's a change, we tell Telegram about the change and Telegram then forward our message to the user. There is another way you can do this and that's called the webhook way, right? So here's how the webhook way works, right? Instead of in, in the previous scenario where Telegram puts the message on the get updates API and then you go and check it, you tell Telegram, hey, I am contactable at this URL, right? So in the webhook uh, paradigm, when the user sends a message to the Telegram bot, um, because Telegram knows where to access your code, uh, Telegram sends the message to you directly. So you don't waste resources checking a server every second or something waiting for an update. Instead, you can just sit there and when Telegram has an update for you, it comes and tells you instead, right? And then you process the message, send it back to Telegram, who sends it back to the user. So uh, the reason I'm telling you about this is because based on the kinds of implementations you guys might be doing or where you choose to host your bot, um, these differences matter. In the polling context, your CPU usage is slightly higher because you're constantly checking a website, right? In a webhook context, that may not be the case because you just sit there and you wait for an incoming request, right? So this is just some extra knowledge that you can make use of. And uh, in the slides, there's a sample uh, implementation of how to create a webhook. Yeah. So uh, let's start to wrap up. Beyond the stuff we've done today, the Telegram bot API is very, very powerful. So uh, the API itself is accessible at this URL called the telegram.org slash bot slash API. And this request response and alert thing is just the tip of the iceberg. There's a whole bunch of things you can do with the Telegram API, right? So you can accept payment via Telegram. You can log in with Telegram and use it as a means of authenticating users. You can create games and, and so many other things. So um, it's, it's, it's very versatile. And that's why I personally like the Telegram API a lot. I've done a lot of funky things with it. Um, when I was learning to drive and ride a, a motorcycle, I had a bot that would go and log into the website and screenshot the schedule and send it to me all via Telegram. So you can use it to automate a lot of really, really small things in your life. And I think it's, it's, it's wonderful, right? Um, there might be some of you guys who are not familiar with um, uh, Python, right? Like it might not be your main language. And so um, the Telegram SDKs exist in other languages too, right? So there is a uh, Node SDK, which um, is also quite popular. But if you prefer to stick with Python, um, if you go to the first URL, there is a learning by example tab and a documentation tab. They spell out a variety of use cases you can look at. 
to figure out, you know, some ideas for things that you might want to try on your own, right? And if JavaScript and Python are still not your languages, there are many, many SDKs for other languages, right? Okay, so um, some other good practices with Telegram bots. Uh, the API token that uh, we created is precious. So please do not commit it to Git or something of that sort, right? Um, because people can do nasty, nasty things with it. Uh, people can hijack your bot. We, we actually had this happen unintentionally in a previous workshop where um, Chai's token was public and someone else was running the attendance bot. So his demo stopped working. Um, and so just be careful with your token. Don't commit it to Git. Don't put it up online. Don't give it to people, right? Um, the best way to deal with it is to inject it into your code via an environment variable, right? Um, the other thing is the chat ID or the user ID that we talked about, right? That number is also very precious because people can uh, find that number and then they can start sending you nonsense, right? So uh, you get spam on SMS, you might get spam on Telegram too. So please, please keep your user ID pressure uh, uh, protected. Don't go and put it on the internet. I know mine is now going to be on YouTube, but hopefully you don't subject yourself to this, right? Um, the other thing is if you're building a Telegram bot, uh, use your package managers to manage things properly uh, so that uh, things are neat and clean because typically you'll integrate with a lot of third-party libraries, right? Um, the URLs for everything we've done will be in the slides, so I'll send that over later. Uh, and the Git repository containing everything we've done is also available online, right? So we'll send the email later with all this information. Okay, so um, we would really, really appreciate your feedback on this workshop. So you can just scan this QR code. It takes, it's a quick form with like, what, five questions. Uh, give us some feedback that will be really, really beneficial for us so that we know how to improve this workshop. And lastly, um, upcoming in Hacker School, we've, in collaboration with the Stats and Data Science Society, we are doing a data analysis fundamentals workshop next week and a data visualization workshop the following week. So if you think this might be useful for school or you think this might be something you are interested to learn more about, um, everything will be done in Python. So it sort of leads up to the previous two workshops. Um, we'd be glad if you attended and if uh, you have friends who think that data analysis is something that they want to uh, get comfortable with, this is a good primer for them to join as well. Right. So that brings us to the end of our session. Thank you very much for everyone's time. Um, if you guys have questions, please uh, just drop them in the chat and we'll be happy to help you out. Okay, um, this question comes up once in a while uh, and I guess I'll just address it publicly. So should you host your Telegram bots on Colab? Um, you should not. And the reason you should not host it on Colab is because Colab is an environment that will eventually shut down, right? So if you host your bot on Telegram and it's not frequently being used, like, like every minute or so, um, Google will, will shut down your, your bot, right? So Colab is really great for testing and learning, but if you do want to host it properly, you will probably need to host it on something like Google Cloud or Azure or, or AWS or something. So um, you can Google the, the term like the Telegram bot to some cloud platform, and uh, you'll be able to very quickly deploy the bot. There are many, many free providers out there that you can use as well. Yeah. So um, this is another step in this whole learning process where you learn how to deploy your code to a server. Um, and it's something that you can naturally pick up after you get your board working. Yeah. Does anybody have any other questions? Uh, we're happy to, to take questions. And, and if you have a use case or something you're wondering how to do, we could give you some quick input on that as well. Okay, I guess not. Okay, we'll be ending the meeting in about two minutes. Um, and you guys are feel free to leave if, if you have nothing, I guess. I'll leave the QR code link here so that um, you guys can give us some feedback.
Okay, I think um, there are no other questions, so we'll be ending the meeting now. Thank you everyone for attending and uh, just let us know if you guys have any other questions and we hope this workshop was useful to you. Yeah, thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.